we have our next one on one session why state governments should ease regulation of private schools and for that we have mr shrivats jaipur here an alum of the stern school of business new york university shrivats is vice chairman of the state mr jaipur ya group of schools and jaipur ya institute of management the group comprises 43 k12 schools in uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and bihar and four business schools lucknow noida jaipur and indore with a total enrollment of over 40000 students and 2200 teachers shrivats a warm welcome if i can request you to come on stage Thanks, uh, Shrivat. So my first question to you is, uh, you know, across the country, all in all states, there are these flurry of fees regulations, especially during the pandemic, which have again continued. Their their regulations on admissions, their regulation on just about everything. So what, according to you, is the ease of starting a school and then operating a school in India's 29 states? and the follow up question to that would be why do you think so state government should ease these regulations Th thank you very much thank you for having me here so i think uh, fortunately or unfortunately it's a fragmented picture depending on uh, what state you are operating in uh, with us uh, from my own personal experience operating in up also seeing regulation in, Har in haryana some of the states down south such as andhra and telangana uh it's not all doom and gloom that we see sitting here in delhi i think uh, not only are there models of regulation that help schools to flourish but also protect parents in a meaningful manner against arbitrary fee increases uh but there are governments today in india that understand that indian education cannot survive without private schools flourishing today we are in an ecosystem of any large country Uh, there is no large country which has a higher percentage of uh, students in private schools yeah it's 48% almost 48% yeah. in private schools which is growing and another 10 or 12% in uh, aided private schools mm -hmm. so 48% is in unaided and this percentage is growing year on year we only spend uh, the government only spends 3% of gdp on education and uh, it's not likely that the government is ever going to be able to cater to the needs of the students on its own so it's about making governments understand the crucial role that as private schools uh play in the education of the country and on average uh, they do it in a more cost effective manner you'll be surprised to know the average spend per child uh is better at private schools than government school is lower at private schools than government schools and marginally uh, the results at private schools are also better and private schools in india actually when you talk about private schools in the west and even in metropolitan cities like delhi you think about them as very elite but india is not private schools are not an elite phenomena they are actually a middle class phenomena almost 80% of private schools in india have fees lower than 1000 rupees a month yes 90% private schools in india have fee lower than 2000 rupees a month so it's about the education system as a whole it's about educating masses in a cost effective reliable manner i think and coming back to your sort of broad meta question there are state governments very many in india i would say at least in the high single digits that look at private schools as positive change makers in their ecosystems yeah but uh, you know especially in fees control uh, what is your opinion do you think that the uh, that the government should completely cede control of fees control and that the best pay, best people two stakeholders to decide fees are parents and schools so i think uh, i want to just talk about the up model which is similar i think in up haryana telangana uh, so parents need some protection but what do they need protection against they don't need any protection at the time that they are coming into the school they are making a conscious decision that this is the fee i want to pay and this is the quality i want to get there should be some more disclosures on what is the student teacher ratio at school what is the infrastructure like there should be no capitation fees so any fee that's undeclared and comes as a surprise as, as uh, uh, on to the parent and then what is then important is that year on year that parents have some predictability of how much fee increase is going to be there so for example the up act says that you can do cpi plus 5% fee increase every year so you can't get a parent in at 
for example, 50,000 rupees a year and say that next year my fees is going to be 100,000 rupees because uh, there's a significant switching cost to the child, right? So you can't say that the, the contract, the multi-year contract between me and the parent is absolutely free because it's very hard for the ch per parent to take the ch uh, child out of your school, put him in another school. So the UP Act actually says that you can have, and I think Maharashtra is similar, there are very many states, there's not one state, uh, where they say you can set whatever fee you want, but the fee increase year on year, there is some regulation and that's also reasonable, CPI plus 5, with the stipulation that teacher uh, salaries also have to go up by that same percentage. And e you can have new students coming in even at higher fees in the same classes because you are making a fresh contract. So if a student is going from class 2 to 3, then I can only do CPI plus 5 for that student. But if a new student is coming in class 3 next year, I can actually charge them higher fee sitting in the same classroom. So I think it's very forward looking, uh, it looks, it sort of takes care of the parent as well as uh, th makes the school, uh, incentivizes the school to do well. So you're saying that UP and Haryana have, you know, somewhat formulated model uh, fees acts, is that what you're saying? Which yes, you would recommend to other state governments? Absolutely, I think there are various organizations that are already doing that, uh, that we are working with uh, in order to, you know, sort of, say that this is an effective fee act. And fundamentally, I think uh, the difficult job that all of us as educators have is to change public opinion about schools, uh, to make people and parents to bring them on our side and say that, listen, we want schools to do well, we want schools to flourish, we want schools to have the money that uh, they require in order to innovate, to pay teachers better. And might I also say to add more schools because fundamentally in a, a very toughly, tough regulation state like Delhi, some of my friends I was talking to during lunch who I can see sitting here, uh, the struggle is that it's almost impossible for a new supply of schools to come. come yeah. And if new schools don't come, uh, the demand supply economics of schools will get worse. And the person who lose out the most as uh, you know, supply doesn't increase is going to be the parents of tomorrow. Yeah, so that was my next question. You preempted it. You know, what about the supply of new schools? I mean, these uh, maze of regulations are going to discourage and dry up private investment in education, like the state we come from, Karnataka, where uh, Education World Editorial Headquarters is based. And the flurry of litigations, if, uh, you know, educators such as yourself and others are wasting their time in courts litigating, who's going to educate our children? Absolutely, I can't, it's hard for me to sort of build on your uh, sort of question and answer. I agree with you fully. I think uh, it's a lot of good hours wasted if educators are spending those hours in court. Uh, and fundamentally, as uh, educators uh, who have a pan-India presence, they will have a choice uh, of where to open schools. And, school, and states that regulate schools, I would not say less, but in a more fair and equitable manner, uh, are likely to get more investment, likely to create a greater supply of schools and in the long run benefit their parents the most. Even if you look at Delhi, for example, uh, due to the various circumstances, even before, you know, uh, one government or the other was in power, you can see that the most of the new supply of schools is coming in outside Delhi in the NCR region. So whether it's Noida, Ghaziabad, yeah. Gurgaon, etc. So uh, I think just as... Uh, you know, you can see state governments today uh, sort of fighting to get industry. You know, you saw that sort of feud between Maharashtra and Gujarat about who's getting investment. I hope for a day that, you know, that scale of, uh, that state government should be saying proudly because we have good regulation, we have 200 more or 500 more or 1,000 more or 10,000 more private schools opening. So I think it's a narrative that requires change. Uh, of course, there are, there may be few bad apples that, you know, have caused the image of private schools to, uh, you know, go down in the media. But uh, largely, I would say very largely, 99% of private schools in India serve a public purpose, uh, serve to educate students in a way that's better than mo government schools on an average in a cost-effective manner and serve, and serve different segments of society. society. Whereas uh, government schools have to paint everybody with the same brush. You mm -hmm. want... Uh, you know, different segments of society being served. Private schools act as laboratories for innovation, which can't happen in large-scale government schools. Yes. So I think uh, 
the importance of private schools largely even in the political and bureaucratic classes of India is not lost. A lot of them went to private schools themselves. I know there I are mean, the largely the middle class is, I mean, everyone sitting here is educated in a private school. I mean, we wouldn't have India's, you know, flourishing middle class if we didn't have private schools. Shivats, my last question to you is before we take some questions from the floor is, I want you to give me a, you know, three-point wish list. I mean, we know, we just spoke about it, the license permit quota, Raj, has, you know, kind of migrated from industry now into education. So what would be your three-point wish list uh, at a policy level? to deregulate uh, Indian K-12 education? So I think uh, the biggest trouble we are having is around fees. So I would say regulate fee increase and that also liberally. Do not regulate starting fee. Do not regulate fee as an absolute. Uh, so especially for old parents, some fee increase can be regulated. And uh, secondly, look at outcomes. And again, this is sort of a five to seven year wish list rather than inputs. Even if you look at CBSC affiliations and so on, I think we over-regulate on inputs. You should have so much land, so much uh, class size, uh, so many computers. And we under-regulate or are under-transparent on output. So we know that both in the public and the private school system, we struggle with learning outcomes. Of course, you know, the people sitting in this room might be from the 1% exceptional schools, but in general, less than 50% of our five class grade fivers can read class two text, can do class two math, you know, we've all read the stats. So, uh, you know, the NEP sort of spoke about this, have more outcome oriented benchmarks and make, and for schools to be transparent about them. Let me say that at my school, you know, 99% of students in class three and five can do this. And this is my fee, you know, and uh, do you like this or not? Rather than just regulate on input. So I would say two wish lists. Uh, make fee fixation free for new students, let old students have some reasonable regulation and uh, regulate and make output transparent rather than input. The only output today we look at is class 10 and 12 results, which unfortunately is too late. Uh, you know, if students have been left behind in class 2 and th or 3 or 4, which is when most students get left behind in terms of their learning outcome levels, it's almost impossible to catch up in class 10 or 12. Yeah, and also, Srivats, finally, you know, I just want to ask you one last question. These entire regulation set of regulations seem to be, you know, only a money-making and corruption machine. I mean, again, going back to Karnataka, uh, RUPSA, which is the Registered Unaided Private Schools Association, uh, just three months ago wrote to PM Modi saying that, forget about the Contractors Association writing earlier, I mean, the Education Department and Ministry is the most corrupt. So these regulations... I think at a policy level, we need to deregulate because also if you want to attack the root of uh, corruption, what do you have to say on that? Sure. So thankfully, I've not had any personal encounters with uh, large-scale corruption in education departments. But uh, so, I, And I don't know much about the Karnataka case. But in general, I guess you have to have more transparency from the side of schools and just common sense regulation uh, rather than, you know, uh, somebody trying to, a bureaucrat trying to figure out whether you should have made X expenditure or Y or whether X is permissible or Y. I think uh, how best to spend money is le better left in the hands of uh, private players uh, as it is in industry. It's their own the money. same in education. But uh, the only thing is that you can have some reasonable regulation around not having capitation fees, not having uh, fees that, you know, a huge fee increases from one year to another. So I think if you restrict regulation in a manner that's explainable in, a, in one or two minutes rather than X is allowed and Y is not allowed, uh, and I think cost-based regulation in general doesn't serve anybody. Okay, great. Thanks, Srivats. Uh, may I request uh, some questions from the floor? We have time for uh, two questions. Yes, there. Any questions? Wow, everyone agrees with what we've just <laughs> said, Srivats. Are you sure there are no questions? Any questions from the floor? I thought this would be the most, uh, you know, stimulating panel discussion because outside in the lunch area, I just heard a lot of complaints about private schools. Yeah, okay, Dilip. Yes, sir, please. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, Please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Shekhar. I'm the executive director of uh, Venkat International Public School in Bangalore. See, uh, I think uh, uh, in the next 10 to 15 years, the biggest challenge, you know, as far as I am concerned, would be finding good and skilled teachers. So as a part of a huge group, what do you think, you know, would be the solution, you know, to get a, a skilled uh, group of teachers, you know, to empower schools? Thank you. I think the first solution is that teacher salaries need to increase at higher rates than they have been in India. Uh, and there's no two ways about that. And for that, it is likely that uh, student fees will go up and regulation needs to be conscious of this fact. So I think teacher salaries need to go up at much higher than inflation. I think there is they are a laggard in terms of the education we want to give our children. If you don't pay teachers as much as you know middle management in companies, it's just unfair to expect that enough teachers would do this only out of the goodness of their heart. Eventually, they have to run a household and they have other options in, uh, you know, private sector. So, uh, I think teacher salaries need to go up. Uh, there's a little bit more in detail to be said about teacher education and schools, could, what they could go around that. But I just want to limit myself to the very obvious answer that, you know, teacher salaries need to compound at 10, 12, 13 percent for the next at least a decade. Uh, from whatever levels they are at deferring levels of school. They need to go up at much higher than inflation to catch up to what these people realistically deserve for the service they do. There's also a huge disparity. I mean, in government school teachers, they all are getting six pay commissions and a lot of private school teachers, the salaries are very low. Isn't that correct, uh, Shivat? So, are private schools mandated to pay six pay commission salaries? So, I think, you know, economics sometimes trumps everything. As I said, uh, you know, 90% of private schools are uh, in India are below 2,000 rupees a month, 80% are below 1,000 rupees a month. So I don't run a school in that segment, but I find it impossible to believe that someone can run a school below 1,000 rupees a month for students and pay, pay teachers they are. seventh pay commission. So whether they are paying or not, uh, you know, they yeah. know and everybody else knows. But it defies any logic if the expectation is that you charge student 1,000 rupees a month and pay seventh uh, uh, pay commission salaries. So I think cost of education for private school or, uh, students is going to go up and teacher salaries should go up at a higher pace than that. Okay, great. Any, any question or any last questions or can we wind it up? Any more questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Rahul. Last question. Please introduce yourself, any, sir. Uh, Rahul Agarwal from St. Mark Schools in All Delhi. Right. Great. Uh, any advice for Delhi schools? I think you guys are much better, uh, are much more experienced running schools in Delhi than I am. So I would be foolish to give you advice. <laughs> <laughs> He's being diplomatic. <laughs> anyway, thank you. thank you, Srivat, so much.